Okay, I have an original effect to share with you today. Now, it's based on a principle that I introduced in an earlier video entitled, Not Your Grandma's 21 Card Trick. Okay, now within that card effect, I give a full tutorial of the underlying mathematics. Okay, now even though the routine I'm going to share with you now is completely different than that one, the mathematical basis for the effect is fully explained within that earlier video. Okay, so I'll link the video, Not Your Grandma's 21 Card Trick, in the description below so you can watch that and get a full explanation of really why this works. Okay, so as you can see here, I have three sets of five cards uh, in order. Now we're going to be just mixing these cards thoroughly so the order will be destroyed shortly. Um, so I have ace through five of clubs, ace through five of hearts, and then ace through five of spades. Now, there really isn't anything special about the clubs, hearts, or spades. You could use the diamonds in place of one of these if you wanted, okay? Now, as the spectator, you're free to stack these sets of five cards in whatever order you would like. So maybe you want this one on top of that one, and then maybe this one on top of that one. It actually won't matter, okay? Now, since the two of us saw the cards, uh, why don't we go ahead and begin to mix them. Uh, this is just the Charlier Shuffle, and so I can add a link in the description below to the Charlier Shuffle, okay? Or I could just have you randomly cut the cards at some location. That would be fine as well, okay? Now, to begin to really mix the cards, uh, why don't we go ahead and deal out into two piles with random stacking decided by you. Would you like left on right or right on left? Right on left, okay? Now, I need you to know, as the future performer, you can do as many of these left-right shuffles with random stacking as the spectator calls for. Maybe they want left on right, okay? And maybe we'll just do a third and call it good. But you could do three of these or 12 billion of these, and it won't hurt anything. Okay, left on right, okay, very good. Uh, why don't we follow that up with another Charlier shuffle? In fact, when you go to do this, you could just tell the spectator, uh, I'll mix the cards in this way until you say stop, and then you just stop the Charlier shuffle at that point, okay? Um, now, I'm going to show you some additional but optional mixing, okay? So if you want to stop with the mixing that we've done so far, and you're content that the cards are just beyond the knowledge of anyone, which is absolutely true. Um, here is some additional mixing you can do without undermining the routine, okay? So what I'm doing here is what's called an even up jog. So I'm jogging forward the even position cards, and now the spectator's free to have these stacked left on right or right on left, right on left. Okay, so you can do as many of those as you like, or the spectator would like. Another one we can do that's kind of fun is kind of a modified feral shuffle. Now, a normal feral shuffle requires an even number of cards, but we have an odd number of cards. So what we do here is I'll count out two, four, six, seven. So I have seven on the left, eight on the right, okay? Now, we'll perfectly interlace these so that the smaller pile of seven cards gets um, kind of shuffled into the larger pile of eight cards, okay? So it's like a modified feral shuffle. But you can do one of those or many, many of those, however many the spectator would like. Um, if you want to throw in another Chardelier in between or just have the spectator randomly cut the cards before you proceed, that would be just fine. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to perform a wonderful shuffle for mixing cards. It's called the Klondike Shuffle. This is where you take the top and bottom card off is one until all of the cards have been set on the table, okay? Now from here, I'm going to give you two very important choices. We can either work with the top 10 cards of the current packet or the bottom 10. It's your choice, okay? So what would you like, top 10 or bottom? Top 10? 
Okay, so I'll just deal off the top 10 cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll set the remaining five right there, like that. Okay, and then what we're going to do, let me just move this down here so I have some space. What I'm going to do is I'm going to Klondike pairs of cards to the table. Okay, and I believe there should be a five pairs now because we had 10 cards, right? Okay, now you might wonder, well, what role will the remaining five cards play? Are they important? Are they just throwaway cards? Well, it ends up that these are extremely important cards because they essentially tell the future is what they do. Okay, so for example, the top card here, I will reveal it, is the two of spades. Okay, and what way can it tell the future? Well, it tells the future by informing us that the other twos are right there. <laughs> there they are. Okay, what about the next top card? It's a five, okay? Well, apparently the packet knows that these two cards here are the other fives, and they are indeed. Okay, a four. Well, let's see if they're, it's correct. Are these the fours? They are indeed. And the penultimate card, a three. Are these the other two threes? Oh, we hope so. Yes, indeed. And then the final card is telling us that this pair here must be the remaining aces. Okay. Wow. How in the world did we accomplish that, given all of the randomization that you played an intrinsic part in? Okay. Well, like I said, it's based on a principle shared in not my grandma's 21 card trick. Okay, so there's quite a lengthy tutorial at the end of that video that just kind of goes into all of the underlying mathematics and the principles driving this. Uh, but what I thought I would do is um, just give you a quick bird's eye view of what's going on. Okay, but to truly understand it, you'll need to watch that other video and the tutorial at the end. Okay, so uh, it is the case that you, if you do everything that I did, this will work for you, okay, as is. There's, there's no sleight of hand. There was no sn sneaky anything, actually, okay? It's all above board because we're using mathematics, and using mathematics, we don't have to do anything sneaky, okay? The mathematics will power the whole effect, okay? So what I thought we would do is do um, some of this face up so that you can see what's going on. Okay, so let me all explain that. Okay, so once again, here we are, uh, five uh, ace through five of clubs, hearts, and then spades, right? Okay, and then we have the spectator randomly stack these. It doesn't really matter. Okay, now what I want to point out to those who have followed my channel, because some of you have some of the basic vocabulary down that you can now take advantage of in understanding this. This is a three cycle with cycle length five. Okay, so it's a three cycle because there's a pattern that repeats uh, three times. And cycle length five because the pattern is five cards long. So ace through five, then ace through five, then ace through five, okay? So this is a cyclic construction. And as such, it is not harmed by random cuts or the Charlier shuffle, which is equivalent to just cutting the cards at some location. So it really is true that you can randomly cut this and Charlier shuffle this as much as you like, okay? Now those are fairly well-known ways to supposedly mix cyclic packets. Now less well-known is the fact, as shared on my channel, and I have not seen this anywhere, is that if you have a cyclic construction with an odd number of repeating cycles, and the cycle length for each is an odd number. So we have three cycles with cycle length five. Three and five are both odd. You can perform as many left-right shuffles, so left-right with random stacking, or even or odd up jogs with random stacking of those two halves, or any number of feral shuffles in the way that I showed you, where the smaller packet of seven cards goes into perfectly interlaced 
into the packet of eights. You can do as many of those in, in any order and in any quantity that you like. And it will not destroy the fact that this is a three cycle with cycle length five. Now, certainly it will be the case that the cards within each cycle will be permuted. They're going to be moving all over the place. In fact, some of the clubs will end up here mixed in with some of the hearts, and some of the hearts will be down here with the spades, and the spades will be mixed in with the clubs. Um, so the cards themselves are moving among themselves in a way that preserves a three cycle structure having cycle length five. So this could be ace of clubs, two of hearts, three of spades, and then of course even these could be permuted. So you could start with a four, ace, two, five, three. And then that same ordering would be seen here and seen here. Okay, so the fact is the mixing that I showed you genuinely mixes the cards while maintaining a three cycle structure with cycle length five. Okay, and you'll see that if you perform Charlier shuffles, left right shuffles, up jogs, and then the Pharaoh shuffle, and then spread these out, you'll see that the cards within each cycle have been consistently reordered but even some of the suits have moved positions from one cycle to another. So it really will look like a mess if you look at it quickly. Now, if you study it carefully, you'll see that there's a pattern of values here that repeats here and here, okay? Uh, but I'm going to leave it this way for the important next step, which will give you a better chance of understanding the primary engine driving this effect, okay? So I'm going to leave it like this, but just imagine that these card values could be consistently permuted among themselves with the suits even changing positions. Okay. Now, after I did uh, Charlie and left, right shuffling and up jogs and feral shuffles and so forth. Do you remember what I did next? I followed it, followed it up with a Klondike shuffle. Okay. So Klondike Shuffle is where you just take the top and bottom cards off as one. Okay, and so here is a big part of the secret here. So I'm going to show you this now. And it will be easier to kind of see what's going on because we haven't scrambled the cards that much yet among themselves as far as the cycles. Okay, so what a Klondike Shuffle does to a three cycle having cycle length five, it does the following. So notice what's happened. We have, now it didn't really permute a little bit. Yeah, I permuted some of the suits, right? Club, and then there's spade and so forth. Uh, the colors didn't get permuted yet, but they would if you had done the beginning mixing that I did in the performance. Uh, but I, what I want you to focus on is the value, the structure of the values of the cards. So we have three, two, four, ace, five, and then we have five, ace, four, two, three. Okay, so this little packet is mirrored. Okay, it's a mirrored packet where on each end we get threes, twos, fours, aces, and fives in the middle. Okay, well, it ends up that if I bring this, so that's like the top 10 cards or a mirrored packet. Well, it ends up that the bottom 10 cards are also a mirrored packet. So kind of pull off the top five and focus on the bottom 10, and you'll see that it's mirrored five, ace, four, two, three. Okay, so we gave the spectator the choice to work with the top 10 or the bottom 10. Well, in some sense, it's kind of a non-choice because in both cases, what you'll end up with is a packet of 10 cards that's a mirrored packet relative to card value. And then the other five cards will have an ordering similar to what we're seeing within the mirrored structure, okay? Now, for this to work out the way that I showed you, you just do what I did. So for example, what I did in the performance was I dealt off the top 10 cards to the table. One, two, three. Well, look at this, this is symmetric. So if I deal these to the table, it's still going to be three, two, four, ace, five, five, ace, four, two, three. It hasn't changed the order. The cards have moved around, but the card values have the same structure as they had before. And then notice 
that the remaining cards, the five, are in sync with these mirrored pairs. So we get three, get a couple of threes there, two coming in, one from either side, we get a two, four coming in one. So if this little packet is Klondike shuffled where the top and bottom card are taken off as a pair, that pair of card values matches the card value of this smaller pile of five cards. Now, and then if once we've Klondike that top pair of cards to the table, the next pair would be a couple of twos. Well, two is the very value of the second card in our pile of five and so forth, okay? So this is essentially kind of what I did in terms of using this pile of five to supposedly see the future after I had Klondike shuffled these pairs to the table because their ordering will be exactly the same ordering as the cards here, okay? Now, will it really be different if the spectator asks for the bottom 10? Well, fundamentally, no, it won't. Uh, but we, pro we probably should look at that though, okay? So now, let's say they say they want the bottom 10 cards. The bottom 10 is the uh, cards that we're going to now work with, okay? Well, what you do there is you deal off the top five cards, leaving the bottom 10 cards, which is what they requested. But look at what happens if we deal to the table the top five. It reverses their order. Okay, so like if we go one, two, three, four, five, and then set these others down as their own pile, what have we done? We've actually brought, oh, I'm sorry, going off the thing. Uh, we brought the ordering of the packet of five, we brought it in sync with the pairings that are going to be set to the table when we Klondike shuffle pairs to the table for the bottom 10. Okay, so in exactly the same way that I did in the presentation, this little pile of five is going to see the future and tell us exactly what these pairings will be as we set them out from left to right using the Klondike Shuffle. Okay, so that's kind of a glimpse under the hood. To really understand this, please see the video, not your grandma's 21 card trick, and you could even jump to the tutorial, and um, I have write-ups and explanations of the underlying mathematics that will help explain this one as well. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.